All right, the assembly really shouldn't uh, take take too much here since um, we have uh, just three parts. So new assembly, and we'll check real quick. I'm just double clicking. Didn't like my double click. We're in millimeters, grams, and seconds over here. So that will pick up. And when I drag in, we determine that if you don't get this context box that you got to make sure the show rotate context toolbar and then also if you right click you'll be able to select but because we looked into our magic crystal ball of design intent and drew all these in the front plane they should come in as we want them and when I click on the OK it moves the origin of this part to the origin of the assembly. Right, if I wanted something else, then I would need to float this part and add the mates in manually. So let's go with just a, a couple of other ways to do the insert. Um, let's uh, tile, um, tile vertically. Oh, I've got all of them open. All right, so here's the assembly. And here is the gasket, so I'm going to try to grab that and drag to that. And I mentioned in the, the vise I was looking for, I call them marshmallows, but it's pretty much going to make this coincident. And also attach it to the, um, uh, the concentric and the coincident. Now this just so happens that it lines up well with the um, uh, with the geometry but if I drawn this slightly different maybe not so much so if I lock the rotation I run the risk of it maybe not lining up whereas if I pick the cylinder and control select the cylinder huh my mate reference did not pop up so let's try one more time give it a, a chance to catch up and we'll go concentric. All right, so we could uh, tile those horizontally. There's a lot going on on the screen with that one. So I'm going to go up to my file explorer in the task pane. And when that expands out, then what is open in SolidWorks is the cover plate. And if I drag and drop it, well, I don't get any of those helpful mates. Now the other thing is I specifically grabbed that edge because it would act a lot like the uh, the toolbox. If you didn't get that to work then this is going to be the uh, the next step. Basically that drag and drop that uh, mate reference allows it to do what we're doing now. So probably should have done this first. We're going to select the two faces and make them coincident. We're going to select the two cylinders and make them concentric. And the choice would be, let's see, I don't think, yep, there's the other concentric. I saw the little pop-up with the lock rotation, but we don't need to lock the rotation. So I'm going to select the gasket and the through and make those concentric. Now I could have also picked um, another if I didn't make the outside concentric, I could have picked uh, another two cylinders for the whole location. And the reason that I'm doing that is a safety kind of mechanism that if the whole pattern shifts, I go in and I make a change to one of them and that concentric no longer lines up, then it produces an error. In that case, the error is a good thing. It's letting me know that I did something and uh, there is now a misalignment. All right, so that takes care of our assembly. I'm looking over for the exploded view. And we're going to try the... Let's see if it's selected. The auto space components. I'll zoom out a little bit and grab Y. That looks pretty good. Oh, and I forgot to add the... Um, the bolts. So what were we doing for bolts? Let's get back into our drawing. Aye, aye, aye.
and we have an M8 125 by 30 millimeters long. So 13 and 3 is 16 and 16 into, it doesn't give it a lot of clearance, but I think we'll go with that. All right, so let's go back into our exploded uh, view, double click so that it drops out. We're gonna see if the um, toolbox is loaded. Toolbox is not, so while um, that's, well, okay, that added in really quick, so something got sped up there. Sometimes it uh, takes a little time, or if um, we're using the common uh, toolbox on the, uh, the cloud, there's a little bit of a lag, so maybe that's what I'm, I'm used to. All right, so we are looking for a hex. I always have the habit of coming down to the socketed cap screws. Really, as long as it's an M8 by 1.25, you can experiment and figure out which ones you would like to use. All right, so a hex screw. And that one's got that uh, interesting recess. But works. So the M8 by 30. And for our purposes, would be about as easy just to go through and select. And as long as I'm getting that uh, mate reference pop up, that's going to be good enough. Now each of these is going to be able to rotate, so not too worried about that. Now let's go back and edit the chain, edit the explode step. Make sure we're in our box and we're going to add. And those are disappearing for a reason. They are loading up top now. All right, so control seven, control save, save all, uh, rebuild and save the assembly. Oh, I haven't named it yet, so we'll go ahead and give it the pressure cylinder. And if you want to put your initials on the end of it, that's always helpful to keep track of. All right, so now we're ready to go into the drawing. And the drawing, make drawing from assembly. This one went over to the drawing list. Um, again, make sure that only show standard is unchecked so that you can see the ANSI landscape. We'll go ahead and hit OK. All right, so for the first sheet, we'll be in the isometric. And while I'm here, I'll go ahead and uh, find another one, back to the view palette. And the current can come in. And those got aligned, even though I didn't really want them to be aligned. All right, so where am I finding the exploded state? When I click on that drawing view, show an exploded or model break state. So if you've created the exploded view but haven't saved it, it may let you bring this into the drawing, but that might not be there. And then, um, you know, so go back, make sure you actually created a um, uh, an exploded view, and then second, uh, make sure that it's been saved. All right, so we have alignment, and I want to break that alignment so this moves independently. And we'll probably make this just a little bit bigger. Uh, half might be a little too big. Yeah, we can sneak it in there. It should only be four parts in our bill of materials, so it won't be too bad. Going to right click and at the bottom is tables. So just off the screen, we'll go back into, ah, there we go. It was under annotations, tables, bill of materials. Uh, we'll go to the exploded view, mainly because the, uh, the balloon callouts, the numbered blue callouts will be attached to that view typically. Um, the bill material standard, lots of fun things in there to play with, but we don't need to worry about that right now. And we'll go ahead and delete the description column so that I can make everything else a little bit bigger. And eventually I will want to create 
a build of material template that comes in looking like this rather than having to go through that process each time. All right, so making sure that view is selected, we're going to auto balloon. And again, the auto balloons become a lot more reliable. So uh, I'm gonna go with it, line everything up off to the right. It's on a magnetic line, so that all looks pretty good. Spacing's a little wild and maybe not so much. Pull that one back. I can grab the arrow and repoint it to an edge. As long as I'm on the edges, I'm going to get an arrow. If I go to a face, then it will become a dot. All right, and my selection highlight, I think I got a shadow on the, uh, the video card there, so we'll, uh, we'll call that good for now. All right, bringing in our parts then, let's go ahead and close a few things. So we're done with the assembly. Anything that needs to be saved, it will typically ask for. I'm gonna go ahead and close the, uh, the plate and the gasket since I wanna bring these in a couple different ways. View palette, um, I would uh, go into the dot, dot, dot and be able to select one of the other files what I was looking for, kind of like what we did in the assembly. Now the hex screw is showing up because it's semi-protected in the toolbox. So you don't really, uh, you're not really going to edit it or mess with it. And um, I want to bring in the chamber. So this kicks me right into model view and create multiple views. I really should only need two views. And depending on how I want to organize this top to bottom, side to side, probably going to go with, um, with those guys. So let's see what we get. All right, two rectangles, not a whole lot there. But I can change this view to the top view, and that will give me the side. Well, that's still not giving me a whole lot of information on the right side, and one of our recommendations rules for detailing is we don't want a dimension to hidden lines so even if I showed those hidden lines uh, I really don't want a dimension to them so I'm gonna go ahead and delete and the keyboard and hit yes all right so we'll put that up a little ways over on the drawing then we're going to be able to go to section view let that snap to the origin we'll go ahead and select accept the selection and then we can go ahead and pick. All right, so I'm, one of the things to do when I customize is I change that font. I mean, I don't get why that's so huge and that's so small, so if we wanted to do that real quick, we can go into the document properties. Let's see, we're looking for views section and the fonts. So that's quarter inch, that's way too big. Let's see what that looks like. I hit OK. All right, so a little bit smaller. Probably could have gone with a 12 point or something. <clears throat> All right, dimension wise, we're back into the annotations, smart dimension. And usually I would um, go through and create all the views, but with three parts, I'm not overly worried about it. So. Let's pick up the whole call out. We'll grab one of these guys, give it the M8. Right click to select. And then we'll start our smart dimensions for the depths. All right, and then from a manufacturing standpoint, if I'm turning this on a lathe or a mill, this is what I'm measuring. I'm not gonna be able to get a pair of calipers, mics in to measure from there to there. I'm going to measure that overall, and then I'm going to measure the depth. I would like my arrows pointed in, so I'll find that grip and reverse it. And then, uh, oh, that was what I missed, was the whole call out for the center. So 21 through. I would like that to be, let's go ahead and escape. 
uh, can justify that. I would like to have it left, left justified. Just think it looks a little bit better. And that gives them our first, um, first part. Go ahead and save this. This is going to be the pressure cylinder drawing. Add another sheet. And again, if you want to make these three separate, that's, that's fine too. Now, what I didn't do, let's see, we did the, uh, the drag and drop. So let's go back to the view palette and dot, dot, dot. And I'll grab the, uh, the gasket. It's going to show me my preview. We'll go to the top and then immediately it's in projected. So we'll drag out and get our projected view. Oh, and then uh, one more projected view would be the isometric. So we'll place those guys one to one, probably enough room, but the isometric gets a little bit big, so it's custom scale. We could go to half scale. So this is all in the, uh, the view property manager. And since there's not any threads here, we'll go annotations, smart dimension, call out shouldn't be too big. And probably don't need a, a whole call out there. Let's see the bolt circle. Uh, let's see, how did that go to radius? Hmm, interesting. That would usually go to a diameter. So that would be something we can change. So right-clicking, display as diameter. There it goes. And if I wanted to, uh, to note, denote it a little bit better, we would put uh, BC4 bolt circle or base circle or something along those lines. Let's see if we can find a little better spot for that one. And then all we'll really need is the thickness of the part. All right, we add our, uh, add our part. Um, He's going to try to do the, the drag and drop. Well, let's just go back to the, um, to the standard. We'll go model view, browse, and now we're looking for the cover plate. It comes in that way. So if I create multiple views, then I will probably stay with my preference. So we'll create the front two views. Go back and select, change that to the top view, accept the warning. And the warning is basically if you put in a bunch of dimensions, it's going to wipe them out. And I have wiped out a bunch of dimensions in, in my years. So let's go with the one-to-one -one again. So let's see, why did that go? So sheet scale, and then that one saved. So different combinations of the same thing. Hey, I might run out of room here anyway. So annotations, smart dimension, 100, 10. Still pick that up as a radius. So diameter and we'll add that in, base circle. Kind of wants to jump around a little bit there, so move that over. That one's really close going through the center. I think I want to do that. All right, so 100, and then let's see if the whole call out will grab. Well, we got the minor diameter there. Yeah, that gets a little interesting. Not sure which one of those. It's not really showing me the uh, the, the cosmetic thread. So that might be one we want to open back up. And because the cosmetic thread acts as a placeholder anyway, if I show that, then at least there's a possibility that I'll be able to find it. Let's 
Now let's try the smart dimension and it gives me the cosmetic thread M24 by 3. And then the last one of course is to set the, uh, set the height. Alright, so a lot going on. Three fairly simple parts. Uh, most of these you should be able to do without the, uh, the videos. So the um, introducing the revolves going a little bit quicker is by intention. And uh, as you work through this, get used to the process of create the parts, put them in the assembly, see how they fit together, make good choices, uh, and then uh, create your drawings. So we'll save this one more time and call this project good.